In this video, we will take a look at the input tabs. The first tab here is the section information tab. Here we can add or remove sections to our wall. To add a section, click this button here, and to remove a section, this one here. So let's go ahead and add a section. We'll click yes here to copy the inputs from our existing section. We can navigate between the sections we've created from this drop down menu here or from the left and right arrows here. We can also change the name of the section if we'd like here. The other important input on this tab is the design method. I have the NCMA design method selected, but we can also choose from the AASHTO 2002, AASHTO LRFD 2012, or the Canadian design methods. The next tab is the geometry tab. Here's where we will enter a majority of our wall inputs. So let's go ahead and enter some sample inputs for our wall. I'm going to make this wall 10 feet tall. Now we have a 5.2 batter, which is standard for a vertical block wall. Let's do a half a foot of embedment. I'll do a one foot leveling pad depth. And then we have leveling pad widths entered for us already. If we wanted to put in a back slope, we could fill out these boxes here. So for example, if I wanted to do a two to one back slope, I would do something that looks like this. That extends for 20 feet. For our example, let's do a surcharge. So I'm going to do a 250 pounds per square foot surcharge, and I'll have that extend to 20 feet. A couple other options we have in this tab are we can enter a second live load or a dead load, or we can enter a toe slope here. Next is the soils tab. Here we can enter the edit the parameters of our soil. The soil zones we can adjust are the reinforced, retained, foundation, and leveling pad and the parameters we can modify are the angle of friction, cohesion, and specific weight. I'll stick with the parameters here for the reinforced, retained, and foundation zones, and the leveling pad properties are representative of a crushed stone leveling pad, which is standard for a vertical block wall. Uh, alternatively, if you want to use a concrete leveling pad, you can select this button here. The next tab is the factors of safety tab. These factors of safety default to the standard NCMA values, but you have the option to change them if you'd like. Note that this tab changes depending on the design method you've selected. For example, if I go back to the section information tab and change from NCMA to AASHTO LRFD, the factors of safety tab is now the load factors tab, and you can see that this tab has changed. Finally, to complete the input section, there's the seismic factors tab. Here we can enter seismic factors if we'd like to look at a seismic design. The important thing to note here is that this box here must be selected if you want the option of viewing a seismic design. Otherwise, only a static design will be displayed. That is all for the input section. In the next video, we will take a look at how to view our results.